What's up boys, welcome back to another video. Today I will be ranking the top 5 best PvP bloodlines in Shindle Life. Now this is my opinion, so don't get too offended. And if your favourite bloodline isn't on this list, leave a comment explaining why it should be. And let's get straight into the video. Alright, in the number 5 spot we have Tetsuo Kaijin. Now Tetsuo Kaijin is like a good all-rounder bloodline. Most of the abilities are good, the mode specs are all good. Like, this is the first move. The reason why it's moved down since the last video is because this move has actually been nerfed since it can now be knocked back by any ability. But as you saw right there, it did about 70-80k damage. Pretty decent move, especially for an instant cast. Like, that's that's really nice. So, we also have the second move. This is probably my favourite move. It's a long range chase move that does 80k damage if you land at every single hit. It can also stack moves on top of it, which is mainly why it's so good. But yeah, probably the strongest move of Tetsuo Kaijin is the, the Q-Spec, and I'll show you why in a second. Oh gosh, I thought I used it then. That's why I'm blocked. But yeah. So basically you pull them in, just combo them, and then it sends you into an air combo. Now here you have the option to either do moves or just continue attacking them. But I continued attacking them with M1s and it did 130k. So theoretically if you use moves instead, that's an extremely overpowered combo starter that does a solid... 90k damage straight away. So we also have the C-Spec, which is a really good combo starter because it just teleports onto the enemy, and the E-Spec, which is also a good combo starter because 1. It stuns, 2. It block breaks, and 3. It's a wide range AoE. But the worst move of Tetsuo is probably the third move because its only redeeming quality is that it's a block breaker. The startup is way too long, it has hand signs, and it doesn't instantly do damage. Uh, the AoE is big, I guess, but there's no point when it's ground locked and you can literally jump over the move. So, yeah, that's why Tetsuo Kaijin is in number 5. So, in the number 4 spot, we have Ashura Shizen. Now, this used to be below Tetsuo Kaijin, but then I realized it kind of is better. Like, it's just a really good ranged bloodline, so I'm going to show you what I mean really quick. So, this first move is a rapid attacking stun. So, he can't move at the moment. That is quite a long-lasting stun, and it does, what, 66k damage? Now, the third move is not that good, but it's decent if you're a Taijutsu user, because you can continue off of it, although it is quite difficult. If you manage to time it right, you can continue off of it, but it's usually used as a combo ender. That's why it's not the best move. But then we got the second move, which is the best. So this is a block breaker, strains chi, and it's a very long stun. It is on the stun GCD, which is a shame, so you can't use it with something like Getsuga first, but it's so worth having it in your moveset. It's like a very, very good move. It tracks as well, it's just so good. So now we have the mode. Now the C-Spec is pretty OP as far as C-Spec goes. This this is a very long range C-Spec and it is 85k. Like that's that's a lot of damage. I believe... Oh wait, I forgot. That's not... <laughs> this is the Q-Spec. So Q-Spec makes you into a full Susano. Similar to Kamaki second, so the M1s are super OP as you can see, look at those M1s. And the E-Spec changes whether you're in mode or not, so that's uh, the usual E-Spec. It's decent, it's not the best, but if we go back into base form, the E-Spec is even better. So if I can just wait until this cooldown's done, I'll show you what the E-Spec does. I'm gonna do the E-Spec again. There we go. So the E-Spec is a mix between the second move and just a normal attack, except it does way more damage. Do you see that? 83 k Now, if I use the second move again, since you... Ah, uh, he caught me. But yeah, it's 30 second cooldown, but it's just as OP as the second move. Even more OP, I'd say, because it does more damage, and it has the same chi drain, and you don't have to aim at all. It's counter. So you can have both of these in your moveset. So you can have two stuns that drain chi, which is extremely overpowered in my opinion. And that's why this is above Tetsuo Kaijin and in the number 4 spot for best bloodlines for PvP. Okay, so the next bloodline on the list and in the number 3 spot is Barumaki Shiki or Barumaki Gaiden, either one. Did the same thing, just different skin. So this is because it has a bunch of decent moves. I can't remember which moves are which because I don't use this bloodline often, but I think this is the combo starter. Yeah, it is. So this isn't an instant cast, which is sort of a letdown but as you can see it more than makes up for it with the moves um not with the moves with the damage so that did about what 88k 90k so i've got to 
at a dodge. But yeah, there's also this move, which I unfortunately missed. And this move. This move is a counter, so if he hits me, it reflects the damage. So it basically builds up damage, and then when the move is over, it releases all the damage that has been built up. So it's a really unique move. I don't think I've seen anything like it. I don't think it's on the counter GCD, which is pretty nice, in all honesty. So I'm trying to just survive until I get the second move back. What I might do is mode up really quick, just to show you guys the moded abilities, like the counter. The counter is really OP. I must say, but it has one flaw, which I'm also going to show you now. So, is he AFK or what? Okay, so I accidentally used my weapon spec, so let's just do the e-spec really quick. E-spec, a lot of damage, a lot of damage for an e-spec. It is pretty good e-spec as well, instant cast, uh, just, it has a little bit of travel time, but it's not enough to actually react. This is the second move. So you attack them and you teleport onto them. This works very well with the first move because you can use moves towards the end of the first move. And now this is the C spec. So the C spec's like a bomb. It's a DOT bomb that also slows the enemy. So at the end is a giant explosion. And that did 120k. So as you might be able to tell, this bloodline does a lot of damage. High damage output bloodline. Now I'm gonna try and pull off the counter. I believe he's gonna teleport onto me now. There we go. So this is the counter. As you can see, this looks pretty busted. Only a 15 second cooldown, and the move lasts for 6 seconds. So there's only 8 more seconds until I can use it again. But the main problem is that you can still attack while the counter is running. So unlike the Tetsuo Kaijin counter, if I were to use this counter, if he was a player, he would still be able to punch me. Like, he just teleported onto me, he would be able to combo me while he's getting attacked. He can also use iframes like Chaos Third. So that's the main issue with this bloodline. And also why I don't use it. I prefer the Tetsuo Kaijin mode, but uh, everyone has different preferences. So yeah, let's just go on to the next bloodline. Alright, now the next bloodline on the list, and the number two spot, is Kamaki Inferno or Akuma. Like, they're the same thing. Again, just a skin. But this is here because it's just busted all around. Like, the C-Spec is just an instant cast attack. The third move is an instant cast as well, perfect for comboing them together, like look at that, instant 100k damage, no effort needed, no skill needed, nothing, just instant, boom, 100k. So, the first move, I believe this is a block breaker, but it's not a very good block breaker, it's pretty, it's pretty stinky in all honesty, but the second move is decent, the second move is quite alright, it's like a rapid fire attack, I forgot to get my auto dodge on, um, so I'm gonna use the second move now. And this is like a rapid fire. It does a decent amount of damage to be fair for what it is. Like, that's 80k. That's a really good move, in my opinion. And what else do we have? We have the E-Spec. Now, this is probably why this bloodline is this high on the list, just for this one ability. So, this probably won't work on the boss, but every single time they hit you, it reflects 18k damage. Like, every single time, in like an interval of like, what, one second? So, the move lasts for, I think it's about like 10 seconds or so. And every time they hit you, every 0.5 seconds, it will reflect like 18k damage. So it has potential to do like 300k damage. And if two people are standing on top of each other, you know, it's it's kind of over for them. So I'm going to try and use it again. Hopefully he'll attack more this time so I can give you a more accurate description. Here you go. You see what I mean? Every single punch he's doing, he gets, that's not even 18k, that's uh, 25k. So 25k every single time he hits me, I'm not going to go for that Sengoku now. Um, so yeah, that's pretty busted. We also have the Q-Spec here. Uh, that does 50k. It's pretty decent. I believe it's a block breaker as well. And what other things we have? Ah, oh, I, know, I know, I know. We have more modes. So this isn't actually the only mode. However, it is the best mode. But if you want to have more of an aggressive approach, you could buff it up to mode 3, which you get from the Boromaki event. I'm not sure if it's still going or if you can still get the mode. But yeah, it's a full Susano. Uh, similar kind of thing to Ashura, but <laughs> 160k damage casually, you know. Pretty, pretty, pretty alright. I mean, that's okay damage. Uh, we also have this E-Spec, which is basically Ryan Gaiden second. Uh, it's not meant to end that quickly, but... Yeah, I think I'm still in third mode, so we can also do the same thing that Ashura does in terms of the Q-Spec. So I'm now basically a god. I've got really long M1s, super OP M1s, even stronger than Ashura. That was a single M1 combo, did 80k. That's insane. But yeah, let's just attack them some more. Look at this, oh my goodness. 
uh, E spec's the same, and I believe the C spec is the same as well. So I can probably just finish this entire boss just with this bloodline, because this bloodline is so busted. It's not even funny. Like, I don't know why anybody would use a bloodline other than this. I might even have to move this to number one. You know, if this in in the edit, if this is number one, then you know why. <laughs> Let's just go on to the next bloodline. So the final bloodline and the best in the entire game is Code Gaiden. So this is actually the newest bloodline added, but it's just so busted. So uh, there's a lot of reasons why this is busted, but pretty much the main reason is the mode. Every single ability of the mode is super overpowered. So let me just show you the Q spec, for example, if I can get him to attack me. So this is basically a, an extremely buffed version of the Shindai Akuma counter. Now he didn't actually hit me, which is a shame, but I can show you the c-spec now so the c-spec by itself isn't that big of an issue but if you mix it with a third move oh do traps don't work on bosses oh that might be a pain actually i might have to go to the normal npcs for that but yeah so each one of these traps does a significant amount of damage i'll have to show you on actual npcs but yeah this is the first move summons a bunch of clones eyes and clones this is what i meant when i said it's a more op version of shindai akuma so, this, the Q-Spec is basically the exact same thing, except it's a counter. Uh, I can't actually do it at the moment because I'm blind, that's a shame. Here we go. Hit me please, good sir, hit me. Oh, this guy's a pain, you know. But yeah, the second move... Uh, I'm not even sure what the second move does in all honesty, I don't actually use it. I'll have to test that in a second. Oh right, this is what the second move does. The second move is OP as well, because you can just force them to teleport back to this location and just spam him once. It's absolutely ridiculously overpowered. You can just stay on this one point, spam him once, kill him. It's so broken. I don't know why they decided to make every single ability of this mode and this bloodline just overpowered, but they did. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go get a green scroll just so I can show you the C-Spec plus third move combination. It does about like 300k if you land all of them. And it's even more deadly if you ha uh, if you pair it with the headless ability. Headless uh, first. No, Headless 3rd, sorry, because it's the exact same thing as the C-Spec, so you can just stack them on top of each other, and it's just absolutely busted. I didn't actually manage to show you guys the E-Spec, but what the E-Spec does, and I'm going to show you now, but you can't actually see the effects of it. It puts every single one of their moves on cooldown for 10 seconds. So, theoretically, if you use the E-Spec, C-Spec, and then 3rd move, it's an inescapable combo. They can't do anything. I don't even think you can dodge Taijutsu anyway, but anyway, let me just pop. Let's grab one of them. Aw, oh, the game glitched. Aw, oh, goodness sake. But yeah, you get the point. It would have been super OP. So yeah, go test that on someone else when you actually get into a game with someone or something. And just give it a try. It's super OP. And the E-Spec, it's a point and click. And it works the exact same as the second move, except way more busted. So yeah, let me just spam M1s on this poor fella that's just getting beat up. The M1s them by themselves are super OP as well. Like, if I were to just... Oh yeah, I just remembered I haven't tested the Q spec yet. Hit me good sir. There you go. As I said, much more OP version of Shindai Akuma. Just bodied them straight away. Now, you you can probably see why this is the best bloodline in the game, and if you can't, I think you're a bit of a fool in all honesty. Uh, but yeah, if you guys uh, found this video helpful at all, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, share, whatever. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.